Ohio Gazimus. I'm holding time because I'm a little late. <laughs> See how many puns you can make from just one herb. It's just great. Anyway, holding time and and crushing and sniffing, which we always do as we breathe and anchor in wisdom. Oh, Anchor in Wisdom and Anchor in Healing. There's a little wisdom back there. I just posted that. That was the John D. picture I had wanted to post uh, for the Queen Elizabeth. But I have other herbs here. I have rosemary. That's for remembrance, as Ophelia says. And that's what they used it for as well. And, and that's what they're starting to realize they can use it for now. You can use it for. And mint. Now, this is very dried. But so when you crush it, it still releases the fantastic smell, and I can pop this into a into a pot and use it make mint tea, which will be great. Or steam. We have a we have an injured party here who needs maybe some steam on his throat. So, okay. Um, so that's our morning ritual in the line of the week because I decided. Um, Mercury went retrograde last week. And so that's like slows things down and it screws up computers. We were having trouble with the connection and travel and all of that kind of stuff. It is supposedly affects. So, um, it's a time to go slow and it's really the perfect time after the beginning of jumping into January, having all these resolutions, whether you did or didn't. I, but the line of this week has to do with Mercury retrograde and sort of taking a step back and going, okay, what do I really want to do? What's changed? What's different? And one of the, the herb that we're discussing today is savory. I, I can't believe that we haven't done savory. Uh, but part of it is because it's in one of these lists that Shakespeare does. And part of my research now has been looking at the, the writers and poets who came before him and these lists that they did primarily of trees. I've talked about that before during the urban, urban tree festival, but he also did it with other plants, which is unusual as far as I can find so far, uh, pre-1600, making lists of other plants other than trees. But it was a way of cataloging and preserving them in writing. It's a beautiful, beautiful tradition. But savory comes in one of these lists, so there's not a great quote. It's hot lavender. So I've got a little lavender behind me and fake lavender there. And that's our Penelope. And, and, uh, and then... Um, mints, voila, and savory, which Hannah will show you, but I'll just do a quick, it's right here, Sumie's beautiful illustration and the list that it comes in. So let's bring Hannah on. Hi, Hannah. I'm, I'm encroaching your territory to talk about what savory is good for from what I put in, in my book, but you tell us what you Wait, we're in your medical expertise, Hannah's a medical herbalist. Uh, do you use savory in your practice at all? No, uh, not at all. No, okay. I have to be completely honest and say that actually before, before we kind of decided on the savory for today's show, I knew nothing about it apart from the fact that I knew it was in the, the Lamiaceae family, the, the, um, the dead metal family. That's all I knew about it. Dead metal. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, I had said um, that it, it's associated with Mercury. So that brings in John Dee and all his astrology and astronomy. And they used it for dim, dimness of the eyes. Perdita mentions it as flowers for middle-aged men and possibly because of the dimness of the eyes that comes in middle age when you start to need cheaters. <laughs> but tell us, tell us what you learned. Well, I mean, the one of the things, I mean, it, it kind of follows the line of a lot of plants from that same family in the fact that it is, um, it's carminative, which means that it dispels wind, as in wind from the derriere. Um, yeah. and <laughs> that it's also, it's also quite a good expectorum. So in terms of its qualities, it's, it's quite warming. Um, and it's sort of quite, quite sort of pungent as well. And it's kind of got this sort of, apparently, she says all knownly because I've never even seen it alone, tasted it. Apparently it tastes quite peppery and, and sort of, it has a little bit of a heat to it. Have you ever tasted it before? Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's, we put it in soups and stews and all mm. of that kind of stuff. It comes in, um, a lot of recipes, winter recipes, especially call for it, which is why it's interesting that she, she mentions it as middle summer, um, 
flowers or plants or herbs, Perdita, because um, because she's talking to Polixenes, who's a father and a middle aged man, and and um, but summer savory is also supposed to be more medicinal than winter savory. But winter savory you can grow and and put it in all of these you know hearty hearty concoctions that we make at winter time. Yeah, and in it kind of, I mean, you were saying earlier about Culpepper, um, sort of Culpepper said that it's, and I, I wrote it down because I knew I wouldn't remember it, he said that <laughs> it um, expels tough phlegm from the chest and the lungs, and that it quickens the dull spirits in lethargy. Oh, so people often get sad, which is seasonal affective disorder in winter time. Um, so that would qualify as a dull lethargy. And also um, with with the Omicron variant virus thing that seems to be going around, um, dispelling tough phlegm might be a good idea. Anyway, or so throw some savory. And I don't know if it would taste good as a tea if it's peppery. I suppose I bet you could make savory honey though. That would be really interesting. Mm. Um, One thing I was reading okay. actually was about the fact that apparently Sorry? Sorry. <laughs> Well, one, one, thing, one thing I did read was that apparently the um, the Romans and the Egyptians used to um, used to use it um, steeped in vinegar in the same kind of way that we use mint sauce now. So for the sort of you know sort of adding sort of flavour and and sort of sort of changing the flavour of, of meats and and things that you would normally put mint sauce with. That sounds great, actually. Mm. So savory honey and a savory vinegar. I like that better than like a mint or, or something sweeter. I think a peppery taste would be really delicious. I find, you know, because vinegar is so sour. Anyway, so the line of the week is wisely and slow, they stumble that run fast. And that is for the Mercury retrograde, and that is from Friar Lawrence, Romeo and Juliet, when he's giving advice to to Romeo, who's all excited about having just met Juliet. But as we know, things go terribly wrong. <laughs> so wisely and slow, they stumble that run fast. This is a good uh, a mantra to practice while for the next two and a half weeks while we're dealing with Mercury. Okay, can you get that one? <laughs> okay. All right. I'm so happy to have you two weeks in a row. What a treat. Thanks. We have more before we have the, the drink of the month. So anyway, I'll be right back with the cards wisely and slow this week. Bye. Bye.